Back on my little warrior, this is the uh, skid plate that goes on the back underneath the chain. And this thing is beat all to pieces. I mean, it's got the tubes are flat. Look at that. Those things are flat. I had thought that I was going to just get a new one. But then I thought, what the heck? What if I can beat this thing into submission, straighten it out? I spend a fair amount of time watching videos on YouTube of people doing metal fabrication, particularly Jap Hands, J-A-P-H-A-N-D-S. Carl does some fantastic work. Uh, Paul Brody, Paul B-R-O-D-I-E, he's a bike and motorcycle uh, repair guy. He, he, I think apparently he's a teacher at a university in British Columbia, Canada. But he has a workshop and he does some fantastic work as well. And of course, Fitzy's Fabrication, F-I-T-Z-E-E, -E, he does some fantastic work as well. So I decided, after watching some of those guys doing some of their fabrication and welding, that I'm going to try to fix this myself. And again, if I screw it up, so what? I'll just get a new one anyway. So what I've decided to do is I've taken my cutoff tool there. I've wrapped this off here, and I've actually started getting this one straightened out. And I've cut this one off here so I can take... What the hell did I do with it? Oh, here it is right in front of me. I took a steel bar, put it in my lathe, and cut a... 20 degree angle and then a 10 degree angle right at the end of it so I can start sticking it down in these things and pounding it in just a little bit with a hammer a little at a time and then pulling them back out now this, this right here was flat just like that I mean it was just flatter and tinky on a paper plate so I'm kind of excited about doing this this right here this is really flat and this thing is totally collapsed thinking what i might end up having to do is actually take that tool right there split this and bend it out and then weld it back together i may end up having to do the same thing here if i can't get this little guy to drive through them but i've got the two swing arms, the new one and the old one, the old one that I pulled back into uh, into shape, and it's got the mounting brackets for these guys, uh, I think it's here and here and here and here, those are the four holes that's on both of them, so if I can get these tubes straightened back out and I've got that frame I can put them on and heat up and maybe weld, or not maybe not weld, but bend these holes right here, which line up with those four holes, fit it back onto that but boy these things right here I mean they are beat all to pieces but I'm kind of excited about beating on some metal the one thing I've learned about these guys watching them do it steel is actually pretty soft and malleable you can form that stuff if, with a little patience and some big hammers so I'm giving it a shot this is doing better than I had hoped so what I did, I made two tools. I measured, there's not a flat place on this dead gun thing anywhere. I measured it, it looks like it's about 5 8 inch OD and about 540 thousandths ID. So this is a 5 16 piece of steel that's round. I cut a tip on the end of it and then I ground two flats on it. So what I can do is I drive this in to where the flat part embeds itself into like the flats here. I'll put this in like that and then when it jams I'll take a pair of parrot pliers and twist it. And the twist in it will start to force this stuff back around. And what's curious, now this is this one's a half inch OD. It's just plain old steel with a ground rod, it was a ground rod till I shoot it up with my punch here. I can drive this in, and you can literally watch the metal forming as this thing goes in. 
And when it gets in as far as you can go, take these parrot pliers right here and turn it. And that flat spot that's on there will rotate and it'll push this thing back out. Now I'm not going to get it perfect. But that thing was completely crushed flat when I started. And this goes in there now. And that side is semi-round. And this side right here is pretty much done. I mean, all I got to do literally is bend this back around to where they join up. I may end up having to cut a piece of uh, steel to get those together. But when I get it on the quad, I'll get these get the holes all bolted into it, and I'll beat these things down until they're pretty close, and I'll weld them. This one here split. Go figure. Put my next, put it on the other side and do this one. And this side wasn't as bad as this one, I don't think. They're both pretty doggone bad. That's, that's pretty crushed. But I'll give it a shout. I'll flip this thing over and give it a shout. And then turn this back on and show what I did. Okay, just look at a whole bunch of awesomeness here. These things were beat down totally flat. Those tubes were totally collapsed. Totally collapsed. I cut them open and drove two spikes through them. That's a half inch diameter spike. There's another one, I think it's 5 sixteenths. It may be 3 eighths. But I put a point on the end of it and drove them down in there and twisted them and they came out round. My next trick is to put these on the quad and bend them around to where all those holes line up, shape all this stuff. It looks like I still got a little bit of metal hammering to do there. Those skids that are not very, very flat, and I bet they're supposed to be. But, man, steel actually forms. I just totally made my whole day to watch that steel forming underneath, driving those pins down in it, and then taking those parrot pliers and twisting it around to where the flat spots would roll that thing out into the rounded part of the pin. That's awesome. I am just ecstatic over that. Okay, I have um, pounded that thing back out and welded stuff back together. Of course, as you can see, the best part of my welding is the grinding afterwards. But it's not art, it's functional. This thing is going to be going through mud and creek and woods and dirt and brush and more mud and more water and it's going to be a bunch of fun so and it does fit that's that's my old swing arm right there and it fits it perfectly this is the new one i haven't fitted it it's had the um rust conversion done to it so and i'm going to shoot this thing down right here with rust conversion and i think take it to, takes 24 hours after you spray that stuff on there before you can top coat it or do anything else with it. I'm going to uh, shoot it with the rust conversion and then I'm going to shoot etching primer and then sealing primer and then a top coat.